How do you host your first live webinar to sell your digital course or digital product? Let's break it down. What's up, Digital Dads, and welcome back to the channel. If you're brand new here, I want to say, hey, my name's Carrie. I'm the founder of Digital Dads, and I created this channel to help dads escape the nine to five grind and create an online income through a digital course business. If you're getting ready to launch your first digital course, it's likely that you're going to want to sell it with some kind of live webinar. Now, if you're not familiar with the term webinar, it's basically just an online presentation where you know you get on a camera live in front of people and you present some information. Webinars, that term can be used for either sales presentations or non-sales presentations. In the you know marketing world and the online business world, it's gen the term webinar is generally used to talk about a sales presentation where basically I'm going to get on camera, I'm going to present a, some information, I might have some testimonials, and then at the end, I will sell you my program. So most people watching this, you're probably going to want to sell your online course through a webinar. And today I just want to talk to you about a few different options for how to set up uh, your live webinar. Like what software should you use? What things are you going to need? And hopefully this video is going to help you make sure that you don't miss anything, that you can check all the boxes as you go and create and build your first live webinar. This video is more of a technical breakdown of the tools and software that you want to be thinking about and not so much what is inside the webinar in relation to the information you're going to be sharing. Let's start over here with Google Slides. Now there's a number of different presentation softwares that you can use, PowerPoint or Keynote. I like to use Google Slides. The reason is because it's right here in my Google account. It is very easy to use. I love the tool and it just lives right here online in the cloud, you know, and I don't ever have to worry about it being saved. It auto saves, all that kind of stuff. And I've gotten really familiar with Google Slides uh, over the years, but I think that, you know, you could use any software that you want. But the first thing I would do if I were you would start is start at least mapping out some of your content in something like Google Slides. And so this is kind of what you're seeing on my screen here is one of my webinars where, you know, I have an introduction slide and then I go through, you know, my information here I have some testimonials in there all that kind of stuff and then at the end obviously I sell my online course so the kind of the first step is putting together the design of your slides and kind of getting at least getting a skeleton of some of the information uh, before you kind of move to the next pieces that you might need Hey, if you're a dad and you want to learn my system for building and launching a profitable digital course business, I want to invite you to download my free ebook and audiobook called How to Become a Digital Dad. Inside, I'll break down exactly how I would recommend that you start and build your first online course. You can download it for free over at carryegler.com slash book, or just use the link down in the description. The next thing that you're going to want to consider is what software should you use to host the actual webinar? Now, there are a number of webinar specific softwares, but there's also some other solutions that you can use that might be a little bit less expensive. So one of the things to consider if you're hosting your first webinar is how many people will likely be on the webinar. So, you know, you might be hosting a webinar at first with you know, maybe only 20 or 30 people. Your first webinar, you know, it might be likely that it's smaller. I know mine was really small. Uh, or, you know, if you have a pretty big following built up, you might expect more of two or 300 or 500 plus people on that webinar. And that's something to consider because the more people that you potentially have there, the more it's going to cost you for the software to host the webinar. And so I want to show you really like three different types of software that you could use to host your webinar. The first one is a like webinar specific software. Now I don't personally have a favorite for this, but there are a few different options out there for webinar specific software. The pros of using, so this is webinar jam, the pros of using something like a, a webinar specific software like webinar jam are that they're going to have analytics built in. So they'll show you show up rates and you know how long people are watching, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're gonna have some features inside the live room, which kind of you can see here, uh, that you know might be specific to helping you increase conversions on your webinar. You know, things like a better chat or you know, sharing sharing screen sharing options that are a little more advanced, uh, some of those kind of things. And they're also gonna have pre-built or built-in registration pages. So if you're needing a quick landing page uh, that for people to register or you're needing 
you know, emails sent so that people remember to come to your webinar and like reminders that will all be built in here. You even see like automated recordings, that kind of thing. It's going to give you like all in one package, everything you need to run your first webinar, right? That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can go to plans and pricing and we should be able to see that this is going to start out at 39 bucks a month for a hundred attendees. And you can kind of see what's included with there with that. And you know, there, again, there's many different options. I'm not necessarily promoting webinar jam, but this is kind of all in one solution, right? You get the landing pages, you get the software, you get the recordings, you get the, the reminder emails, like everything's kind of packaged in here. For most people, you're probably going to be looking at this basic package, 500 attendees, 79 a month, and you can see kind of what's included there. So, and there's different price points across different software, but this is the first solution is a webinar specific software, you know, that kind of does everything in one and there's pros and cons of doing that, but that's kind of the first, uh, the first one. The second option would be something like zoom or possibly Google meet where, you know, it's like a meeting software and you can uh, host a meeting or a webinar on there. So zoom, for instance, zoom has their regular, everybody's kind of familiar with zoom, but zoom has their regular, uh, you know, meeting plan, but then you can also add a webinar option onto that. If you add the webinar option onto your zoom account and we're inside my personal zoom account here, it becomes more like a webinar jam or like, you know, a webinar specific software. It does some of the things like saving the recording and giving you some upgraded webinar features and, you know, registration pages and that kind of thing. And I think that the zoom to me, I like zoom a little bit better. Uh, it's more of a personal choice, but I, I, I use zoom for so many things for meetings and those kind of things that it's nice to be, just have that one, this, this one, uh, software, as opposed to like learning a new software, like webinar jam, right? I kind of prefer zoom just because I've been using zoom for other things. And so I'm already familiar with how it works. So you can either start with the regular zoom, just meetings option where, you know, you, people can have their camera on and that kind of thing. And you could use that for a webinar, I would say under a hundred people, and it can be really inexpensive, like 29 bucks a month inexpensive comparatively to, you know, most webinar softwares might run you at that hundred dollar per month or more. So you can use zoom like that, or you can also add on the webinar option. You can add on the webinar option. We can probably look at that here and it will kind of give you some options on that. So like, you know, here you've got uh, 690 per year for up to 500 attendees. So you can do that math. That comes out to be pretty inexpensive if you need to go with the webinars option, but you can't, I have, and you can host, you know, just standard, um, you can't host webinars on the standard zoom account, uh, which is just going to be like the regular, the regular account. Uh, you know, this one on pro 149 per year, really inexpensive. Uh, you can host, you know, up to a hundred people on there and you really don't need the additional webinar add on. And I've done that many times. So that's kind of zoom. That's kind of the second option. So you've got your webinar software, like webinar jam, you've got kind of meeting software like zoom. The third option would be something like YouTube or Facebook groups or just Facebook live. Uh, these are going to be completely free options and they're not going to have like the features built in. They're basically just going to be going to give you the ability to host a private live stream on your page or your channel and just send people the link, right? So they're not going to have any of the additional features. The benefit of doing it on something like YouTube is like you can host as many people as you want, right? It's likely that you're not going to have the features of webinar jam or zoom. Like People can't, you know, engage in the same way as they can on some of these more specific softwares. The chat is going to be limited. The, you know, options that you have for sharing your screen and different things might be limited on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Another one of the downsides I think is you're probably going to see a little bit less attendance on YouTube or Facebook. I wouldn't say this is in every case. This has just been in my experience is like a YouTube live stream. I'm probably gonna get less attendance than if I did it on zoom. I think you get higher attendance on something like zoom because people already consider zoom this kind of serious meeting setting. So that's one of the reasons I would go with zoom. But if you're looking for a free option, that's really easy to use. You can set it. It's probably the easiest to set up Then maybe consider hosting your webinar on something like YouTube or Facebook. The next thing you're going to need to host your live webinar is some kind of registration page. There's really two options for this. The registration page will allow your people you're inviting to the webinar to register a spot, to get the link, to save, save their seat. 
what you're looking at on the screen here is my webinar landing page that I've built for my webinar. This is a custom landing page, right? It has my branding, my logos, you know, it has my own copy on it, all that kind of stuff. This is very customized. It's a landing page I've built. Now there are a million different softwares you could build this in. I've built this one in Kajabi because I host like everything in Kajabi, but you could do this on something like lead pages, click funnels. You know, there's a billion different softwares to be able to do this. Uh, but this is a custom landing page. This is going to be the more professional option, but also might cost you a little bit more. The other option is to use the, the built in registration pages on, you know, a webinar, a webinar jam or a zoom or something like that, a software that's going to include that. And I wanted to just go down and see if there were any, you know, uh, examples of that, but they're not going to have, here we go, page builder. So you see this on webinar jam that they have a little bit of a page builder built in. There might be some customization, but you're going to be very limited on what you can do compared to having your own registration page, uh, hosted on, you know, again, something like WordPress or lead pages or Insta pages or Kajabi or click funnels, you know, you're going to be very limited. So there's pros and cons, right? And the last thing that you will need is some, some way to get your registrants, the link to the meeting, right? So let's just say, hypothetically, you set up a zoom link, right? You need a way for your registrants to get that link on webinar jam. It's built in, right? And in most of these webinar softwares, it's built in that you can send them the automated email reminders that give them the link to the meeting, make sure they know where to go and what to do. That's all built in. But if you want more control, if you want to have full customization and that kind of thing, you're going to want to use an actual email software. I personally use ConvertKit. And so what happens in my situation when I run live webinars is somebody goes, my customers go right here and they hit this button and register for the webinar. They'll put in their first name and email. I'm sure you all have done this in registering for webinars. And after they register for the webinar, I'm going to have an email sent to them automatically that gives them all the details and I can fully customize this email. And inside the email, I just give them the link to the Zoom meeting right there. And I give them all the other details they might need. I can include images. I can include different buttons and different things in there. It's fully customizable. This also allows me to build my email list, right? So these people go onto my email list in ConvertKit. I can email them later. I can sell them different things. There it is, right? So this is what I do. You don't have to do this. You could use those pre-built reminder emails in Zoom or Webinar Jam or whatever software. This is just the way that I do it. And that's really all the things you need to host your first live webinar. Just to recap, you're gonna need your slides to be ready, right? You're gonna need a registration page so people can sign up for the webinar. You're gonna need to make sure that they get the link in their email or in a text after they register. And you're going to need some kind of software to host your webinar, like Zoom or Webinar Jam, or at minimum, doing it on a YouTube live stream or in a Facebook group. I hope this was helpful today. If you got value out of this video today, make sure you hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell icon if you wanna get notified when we release new videos. Thanks a ton and I'll see you soon.